I never thought I was going to live this long. At the end of last year, I started reflecting on where I'm at and the dissonance that comes with. I had a really amazing response on my last video, and I am so overwhelmingly thankful for that. Uh, if you're new here, um, welcome. This is going to be a more casual video, but I do have a few more video essays that I'm currently working on. While I'm at it, a quick note about the last video. Uh, after posting, I actually was gifted the Prima Game Guide, and I looked through it and found out that the art inside is the same as the concept art on the wiki, with the exception of the one piece I showed, which uh, was on someone's eBay listing. Um, and I actually found out through the comments of the video that uh, someone who watched my video uh, had both of the game guides, the English and the Japanese, and was a main contributor to the wiki. So I just thought that was cool. So about what I said at the top of this video, I want to be clear that I don't have any sort of terminal illness. I was a very sickly child growing up, but I was never allowed to see a doctor, so I wouldn't have known even if something was seriously wrong. I want to put a trigger warning here. I'm going to be casually discussing my own suicidal ideation. I promise I'm okay now. I am just uh, speedrunning a nosedive in viewer retention. I was shockingly young when I first felt the call of the void. Something that I'm always embarrassed to admit because even to my ears it sounds fake. The best explanation is that from a very young age, I was being put into a lot of adult situations, and so I was contemplating a very adult exit strategy. While I'm certainly framing this around my experience, the reason I wanted to make this video is because I've seen a sentiment echo throughout various online spaces that basically boils down to when you spend your whole adolescence thinking that you're going to die, it's hard to even comprehend that your adult life is real. It's a sentiment I often observe in other people who experience suicidality in their adolescence, and I mean no disrespect to anyone who's ever struggled with a physical illness when I openly wonder if this is similar to the experience of an adult who survived a childhood illness. Survivors of childhood cancer are at a greater risk of developing PTSD, a condition for which dissociation can be a prominent symptom. While dissociation can stem from a multitude of factors, at least in my case, when I left home at 18 and sought help from a psychiatrist, they diagnosed me with PTSD. In case you've maybe heard of dissociation but are unclear as to what it is, it basically describes a disconnect with reality. Your brain can't deal, and so it's trying to dip out for a pack of smokes, even though your body has to stay and take care of a screaming baby. Or in the opposite direction. You're in a totally chill zone, perfectly safe, everything is fine, but your mind is miles away, remembering that one Saturday night that you were waitressing, and everyone except yourself called out, and you suddenly had a 30-table floor all to yourself, and you got... Three fifteen tops all within 10 minutes and your manager came to ask you good and you said yeah because you were just barely holding it together but he took that as the go ahead to quadruple seat you. I'm oversimplifying but hopefully you get the idea. I'm making this because something strange has happened within just this past year. Life feels real again. For years, it's felt like I've been outside of myself. A player controlling an avatar. How does this happen? Have you ever gotten into a disagreement with someone? And they say, well, I only did this because you asked me to. 
And you say, no, I asked you not to. But they insist with full conviction that you misspoke. And, I mean, people misspeak sometimes. You can't rewind and check. It's frustrating, but it's not alarming. But what if it keeps happening? What if you try to talk through something that happened and you just get a confused stare back? What are you talking about? That never happened. Maybe something was done to you, and in anger, you're just begging for the others to acknowledge it. And they look at you and ask, Are you sure that wasn't just a bad dream? Nobody is right all the time. But what if you're always wrong? Even about the things you should most know. The food you like. The clothes you asked for. What you can feel in your body. What you can see on your skin. When every facet of your identity and your experience is contradicted by some infinitely tangential doppelganger, how are you even supposed to feel that this is your life? You're holding the controller, but this is a linear path you're stuck on. The writers have decided the storyline whether you like it or not. Many players, if they don't like the direction the story is going, will just quit the game. I certainly tried. I know that's a pretty roundabout way to describe gaslighting. I wanted to introduce the concept without all the baggage that comes with it being a Twitter vocabulary word. I'm not in that environment anymore, and what's majorly grounded me back in reality has been receiving affirmations from a wide array of people throughout the years that what I experienced happened. A couple months ago, someone from my high school reached out and asked me how I've been. I had a lot of good things to say. We chatted a bit back and forth, reminisced, and laughed at our cringy teenage years. All that reflecting compelled me to say, Hey, I'm sorry about the unhinged ways I acted out back then. I know it's not an excuse, but I was being and I really wasn't okay at the time, but I've been working through that. And they said, I know. And I said, what? And they said, yeah, I knew. We all did. At first, I didn't know what to do with this revelation. I had sort of had this conversation before, but something about it just stuck this time. To be clear, nobody knew the details. The ways in which I acted out prompted people to whisper when I wasn't around, but nobody could say for sure what was actually happening. They just knew something was happening. I'll admit I had this directionless anger initially. I can't be mad at any of my old classmates because they were also kids. Even if they fully grasped the situation, what the hell could they even do about it? I also learned that some of my teachers would ask my peers about me on days I wasn't in school. And I distinctly remember social workers coming to talk to me on days I was present. I wasn't willing to talk to them. I'm tempted to mourn an alternate timeline where someone swooped in and made everything better. But there's no perfect scenario where that could have happened. I had been taught to be afraid of anyone asking questions, and I shunned anyone who tried to help. Nothing in the past can be changed, but these conversations with my now-adult peers weren't meaningless. After a lifetime of being told that I was dramatic, crazy, misremembering things, and constant anxiety that no one would ever believe me, it Turns out, they didn't have to. They could see it themselves. Multiple people I'd crossed paths with were coming back around to tell me we lived in the same world. We could see the same blue sky, the same green grass, and the same red flags all around. 
I had felt like I was drifting around as a ghost in my own life, and suddenly I realized people could see me this whole time. I'm grasping at straws to try and convey how unreal the world has felt to me for most of my life, and how profoundly impacting it's been to feel grounded in it again. Um, if someone you know ever comes to you and confides in you about something that happened to them, maybe don't respond with, I know. I'm not mad. I promise I'm not mad. Um, it just makes you sound like an omniscient, apathetic observer instead of, you know, somebody with their own life who doesn't entirely know what's going on. Phrases like, I have a suspicion, or I noticed blank at some point, get across that you witness signs of their struggle without seeming indifferent. It is important to believe victims, and if they're comfortable sharing their story with you, it can be reaffirming to point out aspects that you sincerely witnessed at the time. Don't just make stuff up, but... If you really did see something, voice that. Did you feel like something was off with them at the time? Did you notice a shift in mood when someone was around? I wouldn't recommend initiating these conversations. This advice is specifically if someone has opened up to you of their own accord. I've personally been very affected by having the people I opened up to affirm my experience. So, I guess we're really in this bitch. I never set very lofty goals for myself because I didn't plan on being around for them. But since the Matrix has shattered and apparently I'm in the long haul for this flesh prison, I guess I should make some. I have my list of goals right here. This year, more videos, and I I would like to get my audio nailed down. Everyone has been super nice about my low audio quality, but it is absolutely driving me nuts. Career goals. I hope that one day I'm cool enough to be on Sad Boys Podcast. I think it's generally considered cringe for a smaller YouTuber to mention bigger creators they'd like to work with, but I killed the part of myself that was capable of embarrassment. I've also just constantly seen YouTubers over the past few years making videos where they have to travel for the video subject, and they'll add in these cute little asides where they mention having a friend in the area and going to hang out with them before doing whatever it is they set out to film. But there's never a Vegas friend! I live in Vegas! Don't look at me like that. I was born here. I want to be the Vegas friend! I also hope to one day be a guest character for a D&D show. I love D&D, and my favorite archetype is niche side character that five people run Tumblr blogs obsessing over. Eventually, I want to move to New Zealand. Specifically, Auckland. Place is beautiful. I like being able to walk around places, and desert scenery is nice, but gods do I love walking around places with trees. I think a far-off dream would be to work as a zookeeper, because... The wildlife is just too damn beautiful, and I can't handle it. <laughs> and this might sound kind of pathetic, but I want to have friends again. I really like to self-isolate. My social battery is garbage, and I'm not very adaptable to changes in plans, or new situations. My small social circle is due entirely to the fact that I don't maintain it. I miss hearing about new things going on with people and getting excited to catch up with someone. I basically have to force myself through every social situation I get in, and I know that doesn't feel good for the people around me, but... I'm usually happy when I get there, and glad I did it afterwards. For a long time, I was just too exhausted to put that in for other people, but... 
I want to again. By the time I was 10, I already thought I was going to be dead before I turned 18. I'm going to be turning 30 in a few years. And yeah, I never thought I was going to live this long. But I'm glad I have. <laughs>